classroom for CSEC and CAPE students. You can watch this lesson real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or One Spot Media. We also are live on Music 99 and GoJamaica.com. If you have questions on today's subject, you can send them into Television Jamaica's Facebook page at Television Jamaica or Instagram at Television underscore Jamaica. Today's lesson is on Caribbean studies. We are focusing on the contribution of sports to Caribbean development. I am Melissa Beckford Simpson and I'm your teacher for today. So, yes, you guessed it, we are focusing on sports today. Very important. And I know that many of us are feeling ill because we are unable to have any live sports programs. But hold on just a little bit, it will soon be over. All right? So let us just communicate the objectives for today. We'll be looking at the contribution of sport to Caribbean development. We will be defining the term sport. We'll be explaining some of the varying sporting activities that are in the Caribbean, that we do in the Caribbean. And we will, most of all, assess the contributions of sport to various aspects of Caribbean development. And later on, we are going to go into our MCQ challenge. Yes, remember now, exams are coming up July 27. So those are our objectives. All right. So what is sport? Sport is, in fact, any physical activity with or without a defined set of rules that people engage in. Now, when you talk about professional sport, you're talking about something totally different. With professional sport, you're talking about a game or a physical activity, such as swimming, because that's not a game, with a defined set of rules, standards of behavior, and usually there is some kind of regulatory organization that's responsible for it, whether locally, regionally, or internationally. And then you have leisure, such as what I was doing just now. Yes, it's just leisure. I was just doing some workout, you know, like I know some of us are doing at home in this COVID-19 situation, all right? So that was not professional at all. Okay, so what are some of the sporting activities we're talking about? Cricket, track and field, football, swimming, lacrosse, field hockey, lawn and table tennis, and the list goes on. You name the sport, and we do it in the Caribbean. We do rugby, which is a version of American football. Yes, so we do many sporting activities in the Caribbean. However, we rank them differently and I attempted to do some ranking. I don't know if cricket should still be at the top at this time, but it's there. You know, but we know we have a rich history of cricket in the Caribbean. The West Indies Cricket Board is responsible and then we have the local franchise um, that are responsible for the varying, especially the, the T20 version of the cricket, which we now have come to love, you know, the younger people like myself. That's what we like to watch, not the long version. And maybe track and field should be at the top, I don't know, because we love track and field, not just in Jamaica, but across the Caribbean, right? And we do also have kind, quite a bit of traction with swimming and rugby and so on. Some of the other sports are just coming up in the Caribbean. And note here that we have regional, local, and international bodies that are responsible for the monitoring. Remember, we said, you know, in our definition that a professional sport has defined a set of rules, organizations that control and regulate it. All right. So each Caribbean country has its own minister of sport. Now, in my check, I found that there were quite a number of female ministers of sport across the Caribbean. I, I don't know why. We seem to have more females um, at this time, more ministers of sport than males. Of course, you know, we have our very own Olivia, Honorable Olivia Bab Babsy Grange, who is our own minister of sport. And we have some here from the Caribbean, from Trinidad, we have Shampu Kujo, and then we have Barbados, John King, and in the Bahamas, Lanisha Roll. All right, and we know that the Bahamas has a rich history of track and field as well. All right, so let's look at the contribution now of sport to Caribbean development. So people may say, okay, we just, we just run up and down, you know, we just do stuff in the community and so on. But it's not just that, it's much more than that. Sport provides an avenue 
you know, that, that people use, much like music and other kinds of avenues and outlet. So we're going to look at some of the contribution now that sports has on the Caribbean. All right, so first of all, employment. Let's look at that one, employment. Can't get rid of that one. Sports and organized sporting activities help to diversify the Caribbean economy. You remember that word, diversify? We generally use that word when we're talking about crops, right? But it can be used in this context as well. Diversifying the economy. So we are used to the traditional teacher, lawyer, doctor, and that kind of thing. But when you get to sports, it gives you a wide range of different kinds of um, employment that people can have non-traditional employment, not the teacher, lawyer, doctor. And we are moving away from some of those things. It provides opportunities for exposure and travel overseas, right? So the employment is not just at the local level with the athletes and the players and so on. It's also at the regional and international level too, all right? So what are some of these kinds of employment we're talking about? We're talking about personal trainers, okay? Remember now, you know, we're talking about it, professional sports, personal trainers, not me trying a thing. We have coaches, right? We, we have a, quite a few renowned coaches in the Caribbean, especially here in Jamaica, right? We also have medical personnel, right, who have to deal with injuries and so on, surgeries and all of that, you know, when, when athletes are injured. We also have nutritionists because uh, sporting athletes, they have to be on this, you know, strict regime in terms of what they eat and so on. And then you have match officials, right? The referees and umpires and, you know, all of those people who, who make sure that the game itself or the match itself is actually going according to those defined set of rules that we outlined earlier. We also have the athletes themselves and the players. They are also very important to the process in terms of employment. So it's a wide range of employment. So now young people can look for employment in different ways, right? So they can, you know, pursue physical education, go to GC Foster College and pursue a career in something to do with sports. All right. Now, another thing that another way that sports contributes to Caribbean development is through an increase in productivity. What do we mean by this? Now, we've been talking about we've been looking at this pyramid for some time, almost in all of the lessons we've been looking at this pyramid. And we've been examining, examining the four pillars of the human development paradigm. So we have equity, equity, sorry, and we spoke about equity quite a bit when we did social justice last week. We have productivity, which is what we're focusing on now. We have empowerment and sustainability. So productivity, what is that? All right. Now, productivity is really the rate of output of workers in a country per unit of input. All right, so there, there are varying ways in which this is measured and it's very, it's a little bit difficult to measure it, right? But we generally talk about it in terms of whether or how much, how much the worker is putting in to the company or the organization so that the organization can grow and that they can then reap the benefits, all right? So participation in sporting activities makes the citizens of a country fit and healthy. Right. Well, I'm trying to get there with the fit and healthy part and therefore more productive. All right. So if you are not well and if you are not fit, then you are going to be sleeping on the job. You are going to be um, slacking off and not putting in that hundred percent. You want to ensure that the workers, the citizens, all the people who are of working age in a society are fit and healthy so that they can give of their best when they go to their jobs, whether they're self-employed or not. That is how we have an increase in productivity. All right, so there have been many different ways to focus on this. So we have something called business house, football and netball and all kinds of other competitions. All right. And then you see some of the same workers who we know, they are in fact 
playing football in the evenings, playing netball in the evenings. And it helps to build not just, it doesn't only make the workers fit and healthy, but it also helps to build a kind of camaraderie. And therefore, the working environment is much better. And therefore, productivity, we get productivity from that. All right. So productivity is very important in terms of the contribution of sport. Let's move to another important one. And perhaps this is what you said off the bat of your head. Income generation, right? Income generation. Sporting activities have the potential to contribute to the economic development of Caribbean countries. And we know that we have a lot of potential for that because we are called, well, Jamaica is called the sprint factory of the world. You know, that's a term that's banded about. And it's not just Jamaica. We have many other Caribbean countries that have a rich history of track and field, for example. Trinidad, Bahamas, and then we had, well, Grenada with Kirani James and so on. So we have a rich history in the Caribbean. I don't know, they say it's in the food that we eat, the yam, you know, the dasheen and so on. That's what they say. It's in the food that we eat where we are able to produce in this kind of way. So our athletes and our players are in demand and it's not just in track and field. It's also in basketball. Maybe we don't have much in terms of basketball, maybe only at the school level and so on, you know, but we do, we are in demand overall as athletes and as players all over the world. Basketball, football, um, even American football, which we really don't play here. But we, our athletes are still in demand elsewhere for those kinds of things. So how does the income come in now? How does the income come in? Through hosting of events, right? The ticket sales, you know, National Stadium is full and you have, you know, the, the, the capacity is there. And so you make a lot of money when there's a football game or champs. Yes, boys and girls terms. Hotel accommodation. Yes, and we know we depend heavily on tourism. Airlines make a lot of money. Development of infrastru infrastructure. Who could forget, for example, when we built that stadium in Greenfield, in Trelawney, when the Cricket World Cup, when we had to host the Cricket World Cup in the Caribbean in 2007. Right? So it helps to build infrastructure, not just the stadium, but roads, you know, and that kind of thing. It improves infrastructure in the country. All right. How about media coverage? Right. You know, the media houses tend to make some money out of it, too. Live and delayed telecasts. Right. And you, 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 you're, you're there. You want to watch everything that's going on when, they, when the Olympics are going on, for example. If it's at night, then I go to sleep in the day if I can. And then I'm up all night and I'm watching. And then I watch the, the reruns. And then I watch the commentaries. And I watch it all. And there are people just like me who watch all of these things. And it's not just the track and field, but other kinds of events as well right and and of course we jamaicans we love the excitement and you know when our athletes are running and everything we have to be there right and so we gather out at the big screens in half a tree and downtown and crossroads and montego bay and so on right and and as one woman said we we're at beijing in half a tree and we have the pot cover and we are ready to go cheering on the athletes because we love the excitement so there's a lot of coverage of the entire event and this helps to generate a lot of money all right we also have sport tourism now let, let, let me explain that just a little bit we talked about tourism before in a previous lesson and we spoke about the potential for tourism in the Caribbean but we also spoke about the dangers of the traditional sun, sea and sand and you know one-stop shop kind of tourism but there are other aspects of tourism that can generate income such as sport tourism simply because we are so well um, favored in terms of our athletic prowess all over the world it, it, it is a ripe field for us to make some money from it. So sporting clubs and associations can become hubs. And some of them are trying to become hubs 
for sport tourism. All right, and we have the icons here. We have the Usain Bolt and the Shelley and Fraser Price, and you know many other icons. The kiss Chris Gale for cricket and all of that. So we have the icons here, and we have the talent here, and so we can we can use all of this now as a platform to make quite a bit of money and in, and generate income. How about overseas drafting, right, of our athletes? We have we have a history of having athletes being drafted to the English Premier League, for example, right? The athletes go and they do very well, you know? And we also have them going to other clubs and leagues. Sometimes it is at the university level, you know, college level. A lot of our athletes go abroad and they, they are operating within the college level. That level, they are operating there and they're making a lot of money. Sometimes they receive scholarships from it and that is how they go through university so a lot of our student athletes are actually abroad doing that kind of thing recently at my school we have um, a young lady who did very well in both athletics and academics and she just graduated from a university abroad and it was through a scholarship right and she did very very well not just because she was academically brilliant but because she was also very well trained and disciplined and so she went there and she did very well well we don't know if she's gonna go pro you know she can do almost anything if she wants to because she's that bright and very 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 talented and very disciplined but she can do almost anything that she would want to do so there's a lot of potential for generating of income from sports in the Caribbean one of the major issues though even though we have that potential is that there we have an issue with funding some of these programs and so the what we could reap the results that we could get are minimized because we do not fund have enough funding for all of these kinds of programs let's look at another kind of contribution how about visibility a sense of national or regional identity all right. So sporting activities like cricket, football and track and field help to give visibility, whether hosted at the local or international levels for Caribbean people, for the athletes, whether they are student athletes, just general amateur athletes or professional athletes. There's a lot of visibility that they get out of it. All right. For the countries, the countries get a lot of visibility too. Jamaica gets a lot of visibility. If you ask any, in any remote part of the world, what do they know about Jamaica? Maybe the first thing they'll tell you is Bob Marley. And then perhaps the second thing they'll tell you is about Usain Bolt and, run and, and track and field, right? So we are known all over the world and there's a lot of potential there for income to come in again, all right? So we get a lot of visibility out of the whole process. And then as a region, as I said before, we are known as a force to reckon with simply because of our athletic prowess so everybody wants jamaicans to do something or the other or caribbean people all right so we we have also generated some of our own visibility so we have decided to make it known our athletes who have done us proud who have done us very well you know so we want to celebrate them we want to make them feel good and so of course we've had this thrust in jamaica to erect statues and statuettes of most of our track and field athletes and there's a lot of controversy surrounding that because people are saying what about some of the other fields what about some of the other people who have done us well why well, we don't have one of chris gale as yet he has done so well in cricket you know that kind of thing so there's a lot of controversy that surrounds this particular idea in terms of the visibility um, for Caribbean people and putting up these statues and statuettes. But it's not the first that we have done it. It has been done before. We have George Headley at Sabina Park and all over the Caribbean, we have done these things to, to really highlight what our athletes have been doing and how well they have been doing for us. All right. What about positive reinforcement? Now, this is the last one we're going to be looking at in terms of contribution. And then we're going to show you a little video. All right. Positive reinforce, reinforcement. 
Sporting activities help to build positive reinforcement and prevent crime and violence, deviant behavior in the communities, right? So you have police youth clubs establishing these things, social development commission, churches and other NGOs who are involved in football, community football, community netball, you know, and other kinds of games to ensure that the youth have an outlet for whatever is going wrong, wrong, and a kind of reprieve from their socioeconomic situations that tend to get them down, all right? So positive reinforcement is very, very important as a contribution, right, of Caribbean people um, in terms of how it helps to bind the society together, society together and lower the crime rate as well. So, all right, I want to show you something now it may be a bit of nostalgia, but I want to show you something now in terms of sports and how important it can be for us as Caribbean people. <laughs> so as you heard and seen, the universe boss and now former Jamaica Talawa, Chris Gale, is hopping mad at the management of the Talawas with the way they went about not retaining him. Crumps boss get upset till it reach all race. <laughs> you all take black people for fool. You take your own for a fool. You know, you're always trying to de deprive your own black people. Jeff Miller. Always trying to deprive your own black people. You would have never done that with anyone else. <laughs> all right, Universe Boss. All right. We know you're vexed. And probably some more respect could have been shown. But it is obvious and understandable that the owners and management of the Talawas vex too. <laughs> After the embarrassing performance of the Talawas last season. And you can't go around that. And as much as you are a legend of the T20 format of the game, if the bosses of the franchise feel that Chris Gale is causing the problem in the team, you know where it go. This one is not racism, my boss. Whether you're white or yellow or black, then we tell you, sir. No man no bigger than the team. <laughs> we know you feel hurt and disrespected, but these are the kind of liberty that people take with you when you oversteer your time in other business. <laughs> You're stolen. The man, you not oversteer. Oh, yes. So that <laughs> was a little bit of nostalgia there. Even re very recently, I will still have a lot of comments about um, sports and what's happening in the arena of sports and so on, even though we don't have any live sporting activities taking place. All right, so you would have noticed that I would have changed out of my sporting garb, yes, and I get back into it later and doing some running and so on. And I'm now your quiz master, Simpson. All right, so we want to get into a little bit of some multiple choice. So it's going to be in the form of a quiz get your pens and your pencils get your information ready and let's go for our quiz all right and you know that when we are doing this of course we have to have our resident brain because we need the brains to work in order to have all of this going so let's begin to think time to test all that you have been learning all right welcome to our caribbean studies multiple choice challenge all right let me remind you of what we do for multiple choice, how we navigate multiple choice. It is important to be very knowledgeable and familiar with the content. If you don't know the content, you won't know the answer. Simple as that. You seek out key terms in the question, dates, names, and so on, in order to help you to answer the question much better. So it's about being smart. Remember that brain? Let's use that brain. You use the process of elimination, discarding the most unlikely first. Those are the distractors. And you then zero in on, you may have two answers that look similar that could work. And then you narrow it down. So you pay attention to superlatives like best and most and those kinds of things to help you to get to the answer. And so we use our wonderful acronym here, READ. READ. What does READ say again? Read the question at least twice before you answer. That's R. E, examine all the responses and eliminate all your distractors or detractors. A, attend to the key terms and the superlatives, like we just said. And D, determine the best answer for the question based on what the responses you have been given. So when you look at it, it may not be that you think that this is the 
this is the best answer overall, but based on what you have been given, this is the best answer in terms of what you have been given. All right. So let's start with sports because we just came out of sports. Question one. Sports contributes to Caribbean societies by, is it generating income? Is it promoting healthy lifestyle? Is it helping to develop Caribbean identity? I think it's all of those things. We just spoke about all of those things. It's all of those things. Second question for sports now. Okay, which of the following Caribbean countries won its first Olympic medal at the 2012 Summer Olympics, Olympic Games in London? You would have heard me speaking about this before I hinted at it. All right. And of course, the answer is B, Grenada with Karani James. Right. So, he, you know, he's a specialist in the 200 and the 400 meters. Yes, I know all of these things, you know, because I watch sports too all round up all right so we are going to go further into our mcq challenge those were our two uh sporting questions but we are going to go to a break now and then we come back we're going to do an all-round challenge if you have any questions on what we've done so far you can send them in to us on our various platforms and i will see if i can answer in the final segment when we come back we will answer your questions and wrap up with our mcq challenge soon come back Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much. For Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Get moving. Home workout series with Jamaica Moves. Jamaica Move. Mobilize. To exercise. Jamaica. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8.35 a.m. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick before, during, and after you prepare food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. Hi! We haven't left you out. It's Get Moving Kids. Home Workout Series with Jamaica Moves. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays at 2 p.m. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose. <laughs> Welcome back to Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE subjects. Today we have been discussing Caribbean studies, the contribution of sports to Caribbean development. All right? And we are going to head right back to our MCQ challenge. And I am your quiz master for today, Quiz Master Simpson. All right, so these questions that we're going to do in this final segment, they're going to be taken from 
every aspect of the syllabus to give you a wide range as much as is possible. All right? See if you can guess the answer or you can reason out the answer as we go along, even though the answers are up on the screen. It's not just important to know what the answer is, but it is also important to know why that particular one that you chose is the answer. Okay, so the movements that impact and influence the Earth's surface are also known as. Da -da -da -da. Okay, those would be there's no such thing as Caribbean activities in, in this sense, so that's obviously out of it. All right, it could not be the plate boundaries, that's a different story. The entire thing related to that is called plate tectonics. So, B is the answer. All right. Next one. The term Creole has been used to refer to one, a language, two, a white person born in the Caribbean, and three, enslaved persons born in the Caribbean. All right. Now, the fact is, I always take pains to explain this one. The fact is that all three of these terms actually relate to the word Creole. A language, it is a language, it, you know, it is a mixture of, of whatever the language was, whether it was the English and African and so on, or French and African, all of that. It's a language. It is also a white person born in the Caribbean. After a while, you had plantations where the white persons would, be, would live in the Caribbean and they would have children here. Those white persons born in the Caribbean were also called Creole. And they were not considered to be the same as white persons born in England. Yes? And then you have enslaved persons born in the Caribbean. Obviously, Creole in this sense is another word for what we call mulatto. Right, a mixture of usually a black mother and a white father. So it's all three. The answer is D. All right, next question. Next one. Which of the following gives the correct order of progression to Caribbean integration? Remember, we did integration movement. So we have A. Federation to Carifta to Caricom. And then we have Carifta to Caricom to Federation. Federation to Caricom to Carifta. Caricom to Carifta to Federation. All right? Only one of them makes any sense whatsoever. And if you recall what we did, then you would know that Federation has to come first. So if Federation has to come first, then that means we're looking at either A or C as possibly the right answer. All right. And we will also recall that Carifta came next out of a need to to have free trade in the region. And then we did the entire Caribbean community. So the answer then is A. All right. The truth is that you need to know your content and you need to remember what it is that you have learned. All right. The term indigenous perspectives two at I think two or so lessons ago. We did in, in the indigenous perspectives on the in, intellectual traditions. So the term indigenous perspectives was coined by West Indian scholars in the early 19th century to A, explain why the transatlantic slave trade was necessary. B, convince Caribbean people that the Kalinagos were cannibals. Mm. C, give credit to the Europeans for being solely responsible for shaping our history. That is not true, so that is definitely out of it. And D, reject the notion held by Europeans that the indigenes were docile and backward. Now, if you recall what we did with indigenous perspectives, we spoke about them wanting to be heard and wanting to have equal, you know, equality within the society and their history also to be known. All right. So the answer there obviously is D, reject the notion held by Europeans that the indigenes were docile and backward. All right, we move quickly to the next one now. Which of the following sports is another sports question. Which of the following sports was used by the white planter class to demonstrate moral and racial superiority over their black subjects? And the answer here is obviously cricket. 
cricket is an English game and this is usually, this is what, this is how it became, or it started out in the Caribbean in the first place. And then of course, the West Indies cricket team took it off, went away with it, and for a long time, the West Indies cricket team was reigning. All right, so what a way to get back at the Masters, huh? All right, next one. Which of the following festivals is celebrated in Toronto? And the answer, we have A, Caribana, B, Reggae Sumfest. Obviously, that is wrong, so you have to eliminate that one right away. We know where that is celebrated. C, Labor Day Parade, and D, Notting Hill Carnival. Now, the three of those are in a foreign countries, Caribana, Labor Day Parade, Notting Hill Carnival. You just have to recall which one is which. And the answer in this case is A, Caribana. All right? Okay, next question in our MCQ challenge. Which of the following is considered an element of good governance? So we spoke about development and good governance is uh, one of those pillars or one of those indicators of development in the Caribbean. A, cronyism. B, popularity. C, rule of law and D, exclusiveness. Now, if I was just using common sense and I've never seen this question before, then my common sense would tell me some, it had something to do with law. It must have something to do with law if you're talking about good governance and running of a country. So that one, I think, is a common sense question. The answer, obviously, there is rule of law, which is C. All right, we're going down quickly now. We probably won't be able to complete all of them, but at least one or two more. Soil erosion in the Caribbean is caused by A, terracing, B, reforestation, C, monocropping, and D, planting cover crops. Now, we know monocropping is the answer there because it's the planting of one crop and it tends to erode the soil and that kind of thing, exhaust the soil. All right? Very, very last one now before we have to go. The very last one. Mass media, we did mass media before, in the Caribbean is seen as promoting cultural imperialism because of, and the answer here, I don't have time to read all the responses, but the answer here is B. B is one and two only. Okay, that's all today for Caribbean studies. I'm your quiz master, of course. The contribution of sports to Caribbean development, that is what we looked at for the most part. And we also looked at multiple choice questions. We hope you grasp some of the points we discussed. You can catch a repeat of today's lesson on JNN today at 4 p.m. and in the School's Not Out highlights on Saturday between 1 and 4 p.m. right here on TVJ. It will also be on video on demand on One Spot Media. We'll be on a midterm break starting tomorrow, May 20, and we will return on Wednesday, May 27. But you can watch past lessons on our YouTube channel. Remember, 60 starts July 27th. Get studying. Until next time, I'm Melissa Beckford Simpson. Pleasant viewing. Stay with us and stay safe. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Get moving! Home workout series with Jamaica 